we were on air yesterday morning, we received the uh, tragic news that um, Strictly uh, Ballroom Dancer and uh, TV star Robin Windsor passed away. Uh, he was just 44 years of age. Yeah, and touched so many lives that he came into contact with uh, during his lifetime, including his friend, Dr Anna Kennedy, OBE, who was partnered with him at The People Strictly in 2015. And she's here with us this morning. I mean, terrible, terrible loss. Um, what did he mean to you? Um, I first met Robin in 2015 when I was partnered with him with The People Strictly, and we just became really good friends. And he also taught me what fun was again, because I'm so focused on what I do with the charity and I've got two autistic sons um, and I'm campaigning continuously. And he said, Anna, you've got to do something just for you. You're always doing things for other people. This is just for you. So we had so much fun. Um, he supported the charity. He came to lots of different events. He was a genuinely nice lovely guy. I knew he suffered with mental health. Yeah, but, that's um, what's particularly poignant about that. He's saying you've got to do stuff just for you. Yeah. You've got to have fun doing it. But he, he may not have been practising what he was preaching. Maybe not, but I think dance was his escapism, like it was for me, you know, when I was with him for the three months. So, um, yeah, it's just... I think the thing is, there's a lot of people that are struggling at the moment with everything that's going on in this uncertain world. And it's just talk to somebody. You've got just got to speak to somebody. It is hard. But and sometimes people you just... Know what, Anna, there's nobody to speak to. I know that. I, I talk I, I to speak... people in this field and, and, and they talk about mental health assistance. And I know from personal experience within my own family circle mm. that the help is just not there. I know that with speaking to many families who've got autistic children and adults, they are really struggling at the moment, whether it's to do with education, getting a diagnosis. You know, once they get to 18 to 25, where's the help? There isn't the help there with social care. You know, I just set up a petition as well, who's going to look after my sons when I'm no longer around? Because that's what par that's the mm. story and the question that's at the back of every parent's mind. It's just so hard at the moment and lots of small charities are closing and for me they're the backbone of the society because they're the ones that speak, you know, to parents continually all the time or autistic adults. So it's just, yeah, we've just got to support each other as best we possibly can but, and just take a it a day at a time. dependence on charity, of course. Most definitely, most well definitely. Know. And why has it to be that way? And, you know, we'll get government minister after government minister coming on and saying, we, we have greatly added to the resource here. We've had another two and a half people we've hired last year and whatever. And they, they twist statistics and they make it all sound good. But I know from the work I do in the charitable world and I know from people who I, I know personally, it just isn't there. So stop telling it, it it is. And the thing is, the demand for mental health care has just woo, ballooned. Well, with reference to autism... The earlier you start supporting children who are autistic, the better the outcome. You know, mm. parents are waiting five, ten years for a diagnosis mm. and that's having a huge impact on the family, on siblings. Mm. So the earlier you start working with children who are autistic, the better the outcomes. I've seen it myself and I know it with my own sons. I shouldn't have had to set up a school and remortgage my home, you know, for my boys. And so many parents are still struggling, like, 20-odd years from when my boys were diagnosed, and it's, they're saying it's improving, it's improving, and we're talking about awareness, we're talking about acceptance. But the thing is, where, where is it? You know, where is this support? How are your boys doing now, 20 years on? Uh, my sons are 34 and 31. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, mm. Patrick works at Pinewood Studios. He's doing really well, and mm -hmm. he's moved into his own flat. So I can see, you know, he's going to be able to look after himself. But my youngest son, Angelo, he's always going to need one-to-one -one support for the rest of his life. I only had two hours sleep tonight. I look after him at night time because he's got no sense of danger. Um, he's working on his independent living skills all the time. But what's happening is... When you see programmes on the television, they're always about adults that are articulate, you know, that are high-functioning, Asperger's syndrome or autism, but they never show the adults that constantly need one-to-one -one support, like my son, you know, Angelo. I have to be around for him all the time. And it's hard mm. because I'm juggling caring, I'm juggling, you know taking him to college, picking him up, you know, I'm running a charity, I'm doing events. I know I'm a workaholic, but I'm very passionate and I'm very driven about what I do. And, and if I don't do it, who else is going to do it for me? And I know there's so many parents that are really, really struggling at the minute. Really, like, I can't tell you how a lot of parents are struggling. They need that support.
mm. and carers, if it wasn't for carers. Anna, just finally, yeah, how sorry. will you remember Robin or how would you like him to be remembered? He's, do you know what? Out of the six, I felt I had the best partner. He was genuine, he was kind, and the world just wasn't going the way he wanted it to go. And I just think he was, even though he taught me about fun and he taught me about Anna, you need to look after yourself. He, keep, he bought me a little card when we finished and it just said fun, Anna, don't forget about you. Oh, well, don't, so Anna. Lovely. And I've got a, ba a bangle that he bought me, dance as though no one is watching, and oh. I still wear it. Oh. I, I just Bless loved him. him. But, but mm -hmm. you were talking about looking after your son last night, and um, both Isabel and I will sit and moan, did you sleep, how did you sleep last night, how did you sleep, sort of thing. And I, got, I think I may have had three or four hours sleep last night. But then I look and I listen to a story of you, you know, what you do, and that humbles me mm -hmm. um, to do that. Absolutely. He said in an interview last year, those with the biggest smiles can sometimes hide the biggest pain. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Anna. You very Thank much, you. Thank you, Dr. Um, really appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk to Paul Coit now. He's in the studio with us with all the latest sport. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Shall we start with 